the music just feels so good. You, 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 you're on the number one. TripleThreatFMRadio.com You're listening to Triple Threat FM Radio. This is DJ Stephanie Stardust. And today we are on the air with Cindy Gray, the crazy Asian... Uh, She's an awesome comedian, and we're going to get to know a little bit about her. We're going to tell you where you can stalk her social media and all that good stuff. What's going on, Cindy? How are you doing today? I am doing great. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited to hear your voice. Ah, I'm excited to hear you. (laughs) I know. It's been a while. 2020 just, like, totally kept us apart, and that was not fair. But what... What did you do during 2020? Like, were you still able to perform? How did you, what did you do with all that stuff inside of you that you need to get out, that you usually do it on a stage with people? (laughs) Well, I was stuck with my uh, family uh, telling inappropriate jokes, so uh, that didn't go very well. (laughs) But um, I have been, so the last live show I did was actually in October, um, and I've done a few Zoom events, fundraising events, one was for the uh, women who side hustle for the Chamber of Commerce of Worcester, mm. and that. And then the other one I did was for the Edward Kennedy um, Community Center. They did a. I was supposed to be their uh, comedian MC for the gala, but instead we did it through Zoom. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I am doing a Girl Scouts comedy uh, show on the fifteenth of April. Um, and I'm invited to do a few shows at the Elbow Room in Connecticut. Oh, fun. So it'll be, yeah, so it'll be like the Cindy Gray show. I'm still working out the details with a friend of mine who is managing all of their comedy shows there. Um, I'm still, you know, I'm, I'll probably be hitting some open mics and some um, shows here and there. Uh, the, the, the challenge is, is my kids uh don't really agree with me doing comedy during this time because of uh, the pandemic. So mm-hmm. um, I did, a, you know, I did a few shows again during the pandemic. Like I said, um, I did, you know, that live show. I, I did a show in Mohegan Sun during that, you know, during uh, the pandemic. Um, and they just think it's kind of careless and uh, careless of me. Well, that's nice so of you I, to respect your kids. Yeah, it, it is. Except one, the one that really is not agreeing with my comedy is um my oldest daughter who's going off to college oh. in september so hopefully she will be preoccupied with that and not so much with me doing comedy because i definitely am gonna get back on stage you know i never so thought of it yeah. you know having a comedian as a mom you know i've always kind of seen myself as a dj mom you know what i mean that's kind of not Mm -hmm. that common but a comedian mom now is that really hard for your kids i mean i just your older daughter's not too into it but i mean is it the content is it the fact that you're a comedian what is it that that's not jiving with them or her well that's a really good question i think it's it's yeah it's definitely not just the pandemic but um I think it's more the content, right? I talk a lot about my family and about my marriage, and they don't really think it's appropriate um, and, and, and possibly disrespectful to my my husband. So they um, so that that's a big piece of it. But um, I sat down with them and said, "Hey, you know, marriages aren't perfect, and I think a lot of people can relate to." Um, you know, my experience as a, as a mother and a person who's been married for been with the same person for, for 21 years who works 50 hour weeks. And, you know, it's, it's not, um, you know, marriage isn't always, always, it's not always perfect. Right. So, but there's so much humor, I think that we can take away. So even though we may not be completely happy all the time, that there's funny things and aspect about it that people can relate to. Now, are you so getting, yeah. yeah, are you getting like a huge reaction on some of these jokes about your husband and are they, are they meant to be mean or are you just trying to be funny? You're not trying to dig at your husband on stage on purpose, I'm sure. But like you're saying, there's probably a ton of things that you're experiencing that other women can relate to. So are these jokes going over well and are you like killing it with them? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Totally. Um, I told, those are the crux, but that is a big part of my bit is being married in addition to having children 
Um, but yeah, it's a big piece of it. I do get a lot. I do get really positive reactions uh, from talking about marriage and, and that. So, and my in-laws and having in-laws that are challenging. Um, so yeah, no, totally. I think the, the other piece is the inappropriateness, you know, as you know me and you is I do, you know, I do introduce a lot of, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of sexual content in my, um, my com- my comedy and my kids think that's inappropriate and uh, my, my nine-year-old son thinks it's even more inappropriate because <laughs> we had a badge grab party at my house when um, uh, when Donald Trump became president I said oh let's have a badge grab party and he just he was there because he lives with us yep. so. <laughs> and he would come out of the room and say mother that is so inappropriate why do you keep talking about your body parts and <laughs> and he would slam the door and like I've had like 70 women in our house and they just were busting up laughing so yeah I mean kids aren't going to be agreeable with that I mean I have kids who are very uh you know I guess uh, uptight a little bit when it comes to that sure so now but you also talk about your mom a lot right like your mom is part I, of your comedy she, she is oh yeah I mean mm-hmm. my mom and my my family because I think being raised by immigrant parents there's a lot of comedy in that and there's a lot of comedians like Joe Coy who is amazing and but he's only half Filipino so you only need to understand <laughs> half the issues of being raised by an immigrant parent mm-hmm. right so but it's funny because you know they they raised us to be they they they, they, they left the Philippines to have a better life in the U.S. but yet they want their children to struggle you know, and, and, you know, and, and not, not necessarily have a happy life, but they want you to struggle like they kind of did so that mm. you will be hungry for a better life, you know, what I'm saying? So, so, so that we could work hard. Right. So it was almost like we were, you know, and I always say this joke, um, and, you know, it's almost like the worst immigrants in the U.S. are your own parents. <laughs> you know, <laughs> immigrants. And I always say, you know, if they, um, if ice, if I knew about ice, and if ice was existed back when I when I was a child, I would have deported my family. Oh my, my god! My mother and father. Oh my <laughs> I god! I say that jokingly because right. you struggle, <laughs> right? Right? You being American and then being a Fili- Filipino, there's some dichotomies between that and the values and things like that don't necessarily agree with each other. So you, it's like a tug of between the two. And um, my and yeah, so they're definitely part of my my comedy, a big part of it. Now, how do they feel about it? Are they upset? Are they, like, pr- creating additional content for you on purpose? Like, how are they How are yeah, they partaking? See, my mom um, is so non-judgmental. She, she's born again. When my, my dad died back in 2014, so um, he didn't really get to, to see my comedy or hear about it, even though I was always wanting to do comedy before I started, obviously. But, yeah, so my mom not judgy at all she thinks it's funny in fact i think i get um, my sense of humor for her because she is a very open person when it comes to um you know uh, sex and things like that because she was an infection control so she studied a lot of you know she was an st i always say she was an std expert <laughs> and she was also she was also like an, an aids subject matter expert back wow. in the 80s and she was interviewed by a lot of folks because of her um her knowledge about infection control. So so I introduced a lot of that in my comedy. So she's so not uptight. Now, if you ask about my other, my own mother-in-law, she will not go my comedy show. So, but my mom, my family, my brown family in the West Coast are totally supportive. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, I mean, you are using them as part of your onstage content. So, I mean, I guess anybody would be kind of... Well, maybe they're be afraid to be, you know, become part of your show, so maybe they're keeping their distance. But I think uh, I've, I've seen your mom in your in like in the front row, and she's cool with everything. And I think it's awesome that you're you consider your kids, but I also feel like it's really important for you to continue being funny because, I mean, the times I've seen you, we need these laughs, we need the laughter, and let's just address something that's not so funny right now. Um, and that would be the Asian hate that um, we're experiencing in the U.S. right now. And um, it's ugly. And I don't understand, you know, where it comes from at times against certain races. But now it's against Asians. And 
What's your take on everything right. that's going on? How can, is there a way to make this funny at some point or is it just not funny and it's never going to be funny? <laughs> like, how can we, how do we, how do we talk about this? Right, I know. Well, I think, I think, uh, I think throughout, even before uh, the, the pandemic and the blaming of the Asians because of the pandemic, um, I think there was always stereotypes about Asians. Um, but like you said, there wasn't really, you know, they would say, you know, like I grew up where, you know, people would tell my parents to go back to China or they be, they would say ching chong, ching chong to my family or, you know, they would have certain um, other stereotypes about my family that, that were hate, they would, that would, that would turn into hateful words and things like that. But now it's, we never, I never was never afraid of being, uh, any violence against myself or any Asians. Um, but now what you're at, it has, it has, it, the climate has changed and, you know, do am I concerned when I go out? I, I, I am. Um, and I'm not because I, I mean, I, um, I mean, I put myself in very interesting situations. Like I, uh, I, I did a fellowship in South Jamaica, New York. You know, I did a lot of, and I, I live by myself in one of the worst areas in Queens and DC. So I, I'm very street smart and very mm-hmm. confident, but you know, but you're right. I mean, is it possible that someone is going to do something violent against me these days? Yeah. So I am a little bit afraid about that. Um, in terms of making fun of, um, I do have I do have bits that I've been working on, which you know, <laughs> which I think I, it'll be interesting. I'm going to test it out. I, I tested out at a um, I did a podcast yesterday with some friends or Sunday, and I think people may find it offensive, you know, because you know, is it okay if I kind of share it with you a little bit about the context of it? I think so. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> share. So I mean, I don't even you know, and I'm working on it. So I don't know. You're 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 you're, you're the people who are listening to this are probably like, oh my god, she's horrible. <laughs> no, but see, my whole thing is the, the hatefulness towards these Asian, Asians now is because they think that oh, they ate bats in China, and um, I do a bit around you know why certain cultures eat bats because some think that it cures ice you know their their eyesight mm-hmm. or cataracts so um i just say why don't you just not drive at night you know <laughs> <laughs> like, or the other one i think they say it says it cures um something about your heart um and and i said well why don't you just not get married you know Aww. no one get married so you don't right. have to eat bats. No, i'm joking so, um, so I do, I do, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, don't you just find that the people saying and perpetuating it are just ignorant themselves and some of them don't even need to be addressed. They just need to be ignored. Like when they, when you said, yeah. oh, ching chong, ching, like that kind of stuff is just so ignorant to me. I wouldn't, I would think it'd be like, I know I'd want to probably punch somebody in the face, but it might be easier to just laugh at them and yeah. how, oh, how yeah. ignorant they are. And at this point, it's, it's getting hard to just laugh at the ignorance because it's becoming violent. But at the same right. time, I think it's great of you to be fearless, like walking through D.C. at night or wherever it was. That was maybe a little bit not the safest area, but keeping that, right. that attitude of no fear and right. the, the, like the calm attitude and maybe just laughing some of it off because... I don't think some of these people even have any idea how ignorant they are. And I say ignorant is like, and that's kind of a nicer way to put it. Um, I just can't even imagine right. from, from your perspective, though, on a regular basis, having to deal with this over the course of the last year. And now going into 2021, it hasn't ended. So I think it's awesome right. that you're going to make fun of some of this stuff. I think you should make fun of the people who are ignorant and put them on blast. Right. And and just you know keep doing what you're doing, and I think that uh, we need we need your kind of comedy, especially the, the the humor and the the family dynamics and the marriages and even making fun right. of the ignorance. So I'm really happy right. I know someone like you because you're just you know you've got all of it covered and you make it funny. Thank you, and and that's a good that's a good point is to and and we I do do that make fun of other people other people sorry, what, what other people <laughs> who are I- ignorant um and things like that um you know one thing that you you said is like how do you ignore uh the people who say things to you you know growing up my parents ignored it you mm. know but in some cases my mom corrected them we're not from china we're from the philippines you mm. know but what we, at least from my perspective and what my family how they raised me is that 
if, if people are, I believe in karma for one, and also mm -hmm. I believe on focusing on myself and my family and my career. So, you know, at least for my family, how I was raised is I don't try to engage in, in, in discussion with these folks. I just try to be a better person, be successful and be good, you know, be the best that I could be. And so I feel like a lot of Asians, they look at those folks and, they're, they, and they do, they do, we do say, like you said, oh, you're really ignorant. And, you know, in the meantime, I'm killing it as in my career and I have an amazing family. So I'm not saying all Asians are like that, but that's in general how I think a lot of Asians were raised is you can say whatever you want, but I'm like laughing all the way to the bank, you know? Mm -hmm. Good, <laughs> you know, it's a, attitude. A fam, you know, and you just have to be a better, better person. So you know, a lot of, you know, and I'm not saying all Asians um, process that way, but I raised my kids that way. Mm -hmm. I raised them right when they were, um, you know, when they were when they were babies and when they went to um, daycare or preschool. And Nanny said, if someone says something hateful to you, you never say anything hateful back. You, what you do is you be the best you could be. And I have my, my daughter who got accepted to every single UC school except for Berkeley in California. Mm -hmm. And she's amazing. She's so smart and so strong and so confident. So when someone says something mean to her, she um, she doesn't, she ignores it. If, if someone is being mean to someone else, she stands up for those, oh, well, for those people. And that, that is how I was raised and that's how I'm raising my children. Good job, mom. So, Kudos. Yeah. I know, right? Um, but a lot of people, like you said, they don't. They process it differently. They they do engage in it. Um, in in yeah, but yeah. So I mean. Well, I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it and making it funny in 2021 and beyond. Uh, but I want people to be able to find you on social media. So do you tell us every everywhere you, and everything you have, the YouTube's and Facebooks and all that stuff. <laughs> Sure. Well, you can find me on Cindy Gray Comedy on Facebook, and um, my Instagram is Chipona, C H I P O N A, or you can, or Cynthia Hapona. Um, my YouTube videos, I have to, uh, some YouTube videos on my Facebook account, but I had to take it down because of my work as a consultant for major pharmaceuticals. So I, I can't necessarily uh, <laughs> show all those videos that mm. you have um, seen my show, but um, that's how you can find me. Awesome. So is there anything else? Or do you have any gigs coming up that people can attend in real life or on Zoom? Yeah, I have the Girl Scout event on April 15th. Is that um, open to the public? Oh, yeah, those are open to the public. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I'll be posting events on my Facebook site for um, any, uh, any of the live shows that are coming up. Awesome. All right, well, when you're at the Elbow Room, I need to be tagged. That's right here in Connecticut, and I will be there. Um, so if you guys enjoyed Cindy Gray, the crazy Asian, then I want you to find her all over the place, like her stuff, give her content some views, get on her Instagram, scroll through, see what she's been up to, and support when she is live.